what I wanted to do was, instead of starting off on a plant, you know, I just wanted to do a small talk to you all about what exactly is bonsai. I want to give you an introduction to proper bonsai. I want you to understand what is proper bonsai. I want you to understand how you further go about making it to be a good bonsai. Okay, so the first basic thing when you look into a bonsai, if you look, see bonsai is a tree in a pot. It's a tree in nature that is being miniaturized and put in a pot. Okay? So the first thing whenever you do a bonsai, the first thing whenever you do a bonsai is you have to see for paper. Does anybody know what is paper in a bonsai? Paper, yeah? Yeah. So what happens is if you look at trees in nature, if you look at trees in nature, it is broader at the bottom and it goes narrow at the top. So that means every trunk is triangular in shape, irrespective whether it has movement or whether it is an informal upright, it has paper in it. Okay? So if you look at a tree like this way, If you look at a tree like this way, see it's broader at the bottom and it's thinner as you go up. Okay? So this is a tree which doesn't have movement but is a formal upright. Okay? Similar manner. Madam, if you want to talk, please let me know. I'll shut my mouth. <laughs> so if you look at the other way, look at look at a tree which has more movement. Okay? Broader at the bottom. Okay? Broader at the bottom and it goes thinner as it keeps moving up. So the first thing when you're doing bonsai, you have to concentrate upon how do you create this in your tree. You understand? And there are techniques to create this in your tree. If you look at bonsai, people creating bonsai internationally, and if you look at it on the internet, you will see lots of chops. You know, the trunk is just chopped like this way. You know, and it is and it is from here that they start making a bonsai, right? You would have seen so many photographs on the internet, or if most of you have gone abroad also and seen gone to these bonsai nurseries, you will see such kind of things. So whenever you're copying, whenever you're making a bonsai, try to concentrate on making first your paper. Then go on to making your tree, designing your tree. You understand? So if you look at this, if you look at this, and if you want to make this paper portion nice and thick, nice and thick, there are three methods, there are three methods by which you can do that. Okay? The first thing is, the first thing is try to develop as many roots as possible over here. Give this portion as many roots as possible over here, what will happen is lots of nutrients will be flowing. Lots of nutrients will be flowing from here into the plant and what will happen is this is a junction at which all the nutrients will be meeting and then they go further So this is, this is the portion where when the nutrients are flowing from the soil into the plant, when the plant is taking in all the nutrients, what happens is this is a junction where all the nutrients are flowing. <coughs> then they go, 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 and then the nutrients start diverting into different directions. Correct? They start diverting into different directions. So when you have lots of roots over here, automatically this portion will keep bulging. This portion will keep bulging. So this is one technique which you can use to concentrate on increasing the paper of your tree. Okay? The next, the next method of creating the paper for your tree is, I need to be a little quick, okay, because we have to work on plants also, but I'll try to be as descriptive as possible for you. So the next, 
So the next step of making this portion thick is, if you have noticed there are some branches, I forgot to tell you the previous thing. I told you to create a lot of roots over here, the previous uh, step, right? I told you to create a lot of roots there. I'll give you a method which way you can create a lot of roots over there. Any plant, any plant in bonsai which can be rooted through cuttings, which can be propagated through cuttings. If you look at this, this is a premna. This is a premna. So this can be rooted with a cutting. If you put a cutting, it will root. Any plant that can be rooted with a cutting, what you, have, what you can do is when the plant is young, when the plant is young, just remove the bark over here, like this way. Remo remove the bark over here and make the cambium visible. You know what is the cambium? The cambium is what is inside the bark. When you remove the bark, you will see white color, right? So that is called the cambium. So if you remove that cambium and cover this up, put some rooting hormone over here and cover it up with soil, cover, cover this till here with soil, what will happen is you will get roots like this. But when you're doing this ring, do it as low as possible. You will already have previous roots, right? So just do it above that. And you form a ring like that. You know how you do LA ring, right? Similar manner, but don't do it like for LA ring, you'll do so much. But this, you have to be a little thinner. You have to be a little thinner. So what happens is, you get a bird in a body over there on all sides. On all sides, it will form. Any plant which, which can be rooted through a cutting, this method is suitable for that thing, okay? Clear about it? So that is how you can create a lot of roots in your plant. So the more the roots you create, the more the taper that will form over there. The second method of creating a taper is, the second method of creating a taper is, now you would have seen, now suppose this is your plant. This is your plant. You would see there are some varieties where both you get a lot of shoots from the bottom. Right? Lots of shoots come from the bottom. Always keep these. Always keep these. What you should do is, now these, 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 these are called usually sacrifice branches. Okay? They're called sacrifice branches. So what happens is, instead of, they usually when they grow, they grow straight. They grow straight because sunlight, they go towards sunlight. So all you have to do is when they're young, you just bend it like that way, take a, take a wire, make it like a U-pin, and, and you know the branch which is like that way? You bend it like that way and put the U-pin into the soil. So what happens, this will become like that. So this side, this side one, you put a U-pin and bring it in front. Okay? Yeah. So this side one, you can take it that side. This side one, you can take it this side. Don't allow it to hit the tree. Don't allow it to hit your tree on top. Okay? Make sure they're always flat. And now, the thicker they grow, just allow this to grow wide. Even it becomes itana la fall, so just, just allow it to grow wide. The moment they get this thick, the moment they get this thick, all you have to do is just chop it off. Now, now see how you have to. How there is an angle at which you are supposed to chop it off. Now, if the tree is like this, the trunk is like this, and the branches are coming like this, you have to cut cut off the branch like that, like a triangle. If it is if it is from this side, then you have to cut it off like that. If it is from the back. You cut it, you cut it at this angle. And if it is from this side, you cut it at this angle. So that is why the reason why you call them sacrifice branches is you're keeping them for a purpose. Once your purpose is met, you are removing them. So you these are mainly for creating taper in your bonsai. If you see some photographs on the internet, you will see 
Some people have kept these branches and they just allowed it to grow wild. You usually don't find these techniques written in bonsai books or on the internet or anywhere. You won't find it. But it comes with observation when you are doing, you know, dedicatedly when you are doing bonsai, you tend to come up with this. And then you go and share it with other people and teach them how to do it. So that is another method. Sacrifice branches is another method through which you can uh, create taper to your tree. Yeah. And the third method, which is the most scary method for everybody, is chopping your tree. Most of you are scared about chopping, right? Yes. Yeah. See, bonsai, you have to chop. If you don't chop with bonsai, you won't be able to make a beautiful bonsai. Remember, you're not harming the tree. You're making it look more beautiful, which is going to be admired by thousands and thousands of people. So never ever feel that you are ruining the tree or you are hurting the tree. You are not hurting the tree. You are actually making it much better and you are going to display it and make it admirable to so many people. But that magic, I call it, usually I call that the magic chop. That one chop which you make at the beginning will do a lot of magic to your tree and your tree will end up being so, so beautiful. You can mark my words about it. And people have done what I've said and they've really succeeded in doing it. And they've enjoyed it better. Right now if I tell them don't chop, they chop their tree. <laughs> you know, it's turned up the other way around. So, now the reason why I'm telling you now, see, the third method of creating paper to your tree is by chopping your trunk. You have to initially chop your trunk. See, when you get small plants for bonsai, madam, you want to talk something? I have to remind them. You want to talk something? Both of them are lucky. I have to do all the talking and they are happy to do the bonsai. So what happens? See, the third method is creating the taper. So when you, uh, the third method of creating the taper is by chopping the tree down, chopping the tree down. So you bring a plant, whenever you bring a tiny plant from a nursery, do not immediately start working on the tree. Do not immediately start working on a tree. Whenever you bring a plant from a nursery, never keep the plant in the nursery soil change the soil to your bonsai soil because your bonsai soil is going to have more nutrients compared to what the nursery man has had. You know, the nursery man's soil has. You understood? So it doesn't mean that dust it off. I don't mean to say dust off the soil. Never. In bonsai, never dust off your soil. That means don't remove the complete soil. You should keep a little bit and then pot it into new soil. So that means this is your soil. This is your soil, this is your plant. So that means remove some soil from all sides and make the soil like that. Make the soil like that. And then put it into new soil, new soil. And just grow it for at least a year. Just grow it, let it grow white. Let it grow white. So the moment you allow things to grow white, they will become thicker faster. But if you keep chopping your tree, if you keep chopping your tree unknowingly, actually what you are doing is you are reducing the leaf on the tree. When you reduce the leaf on the tree, that means the tree's energy is gone down. So when you want the tree to grow vigorous and be very quick and thicken very fast, you should allow the tree to just gather as much leaf as possible. You understand? So the more the leaf, the faster the leaf. So what I usually do when I get a very tiny plant from somebody which I which I a species that I don't have, I just go immediately if it's a plant like that, I'll put it into a deep bag like this way. I'll put it into that in my bonsai soil and I just allow it to grow wild and I keep feeding it every week. And what happens is within a year I'll have like a, 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 a something which is like this way, within a year I'll have something like that. But it just depends on how you feed your plants. The next talk will be about fertilizer, how exactly fertilizer works on plants. None of us are actually aware about how it works on bonsai. But everybody is aware that I have to give NPK, I have to give nectar, I have to give this, or I have to give a medical grow, something like that. Everybody is aware that I have to give it, but nobody knows the reason 
why I am giving it to the tree. You understand? So, when you chop your tree, so I go to a nursery and when I chop a tree, now this is a plant that I've got from a nursery and I'm chopping it right over there. I'm chopping it right over there. And when I chop it right over there, the first thing I do is, this is the plant. The first thing I do is when I'm putting it into my soil, I put this same thing which is 90 degrees, I put it at 45 degrees. I put it at 45 degrees and I put it in my soil. I put it in my soil. Yes? So what happens is now, I'm going to show you how from a simple cut like this, a beautiful bonsai is going to be made. Okay? I'll just show you. So what happens is same thing now, I think I do my bonsai in growth bag. If you come to my house and see my bonsai, there are in fact packets about this big, 95% of the bonsai is ready and I've just finished them in three years, four years, all from very basic plants because internet has taught me that put them into big things and grow them. Put them into the ground and just allow them to grow free. You know, that is how internet teaches bonsai. And that is one of the best methods through which you can learn one. You can do bonsai. You can quicken the growth of your plant. And in bonsai always, thickening your trunk is very, very important because the look of your tree will come only when your trunk thickens. So that is where you have to concentrate a lot. And with the feed that I'll be telling you and explaining to you, you will find the magic if you go back home and you follow what I have told you. Okay? So now I'll go back. So the same plant, when I do, what I do is, I'll put it at a 45 degree angle. 45 degree. Bonsai 45 degrees is a wonderful and very, very, very essential angle in bonsai. In this it is, for creating movement to your tree, for creating movement. If you use your wiring, your wiring should always be at 45 degree. When you place it on the tree, it's again 45 degrees because the pressure, when you're bending, the pressure is evenly placed on the ground. So if you put, if you put something like a ring, if you put the wire like a ring, it will, and when you make the bend, it will break over there. But if you put it at 45 degrees, the break will never happen. The break will never happen. So 45 degrees is, is, is a beautiful angle which is very suitable for birthday. So now I put this at 45 degrees, okay? I put this at 45 degrees. That's my cutting which I have chopped off. Now I wait for shoots to come. I wait for new shoots to come. So I get, I get shoots. I get two new, whenever you do a cut, whenever you make a cut in bonsai, minimum you get two shoots, right? Minimum you get two shoots. Now, now what you're going to do is, always remember our Indian trees, our Indian trees are called tropical trees. Tropical trees, you never wire them when they are green in color, when they are green in color. The, the, the texture of the trunk shouldn't be green in color. It should form, the bark should form. Only when the bark forms, you should, it's, it means that it's ready for wire. You understand? So what happens is now, so I'll just, now these two shoots have come. I'll just allow these two shoots to go a little long and gather leaf. Gather leaf. Like that. Okay. And gather leaf. When you have lots of leaf coming up over there, this will become thicker faster. Right? So what happens is now, after it's gone like that, now I'm going to cut it back. I'll cut this back. And I'll cut this back. Okay? I'll take wire. I'll take wire. And this branch, I'll push it like that. Clear? And this one, what I'll do, I'll push it like that. Clear? Now I've chopped them off. I mean, I've, I've chopped them off. This I don't have to chop anymore. I've chopped this earlier, right? It was a long branch, I chopped it back. Now I'll get two sh shoots again. I'll get two shoots again. Right? 
So when I get two shoots again, again now I'll follow what I had followed previously. Allow it to grow a little long, like little long in the sense you should see that you should make sure that the branch comes to the thickness of a broomstick at least. A broomstick at least before you wire it. If you wire it before that, what will happen is you are squeezing the tissues inside the branch. And what happens is it gets suffocated and you get diverted. <laughs> That's when your branch fails. So wait for it to mature. Wait for it to mature and little bit from that greenish texture, your bark, your, your bark should go into this brownish texture, this bark. So when that brownish color is come, it means that it's ready for wiring. You can use wire and you can do it on your tree, right? So now this, this branch, I will bring it to this side and this one, it's already angled, but I can take it to a better angle that side. Clear? All the while now, I won't be touching this branch. It will just be growing white. Now this branch will also be growing white. I won't bother about it. I won't even cut it. I'll just allow it to grow white. I'll allow that to grow white. Now, can you see this chop over here that I made? This chop over here I made. Each time this grows once, this will grow once again, right? So you have created a proportion between this and this. So always you're going to have taper over here. This portion is always going to be broad over there. So this is the third technique of why you make a chop. And in bonsai, when you are in bonsai, always go for informal kind of trees with lots of movement and lots of branches rather than a formal tree or a broom style tree because that is for beginners. But I would say like informal trees are much more interesting. With lots of movement in your trunk and lots of branches in your tree, the tree will look more magnificent and more appealing to people. Okay? So what happens is now, now I'm going to concentrate on this one. I've chopped it down, okay? I've chopped it down. Again, now I'll get two shoots, right? Again, I'll get two shoots. So I'm just following, I'm just, you know, like a recycle, like a recycle of what I'm doing, like a recycle. Now this, again, I'll allow these to grow long and then I'll cut it back. In bonsai, always grow, come back. Grow, come back. Grow, come back. Grow, come back. And then don't grow. And your bonsai is ready. You understand? The reason why you grow them and come back, grow them and come back is for them to mature. The branches, every branch should mature. Only if, the branch, only if you allow them to grow, the maturity will happen. If you don't allow them to grow, now there is a branch like this way and there are so much of leaf over here. There's so much of leaf over here. What happens is now, when there is so much of leaf, there is so much of food production on that branch. Clear? So when you are cutting off this, that means you have reduced the food production over there. That is the logic behind how a branch grows faster and thicker. So if you notice, suckers come through your plants. Suddenly you will find suckers and they become thick so quickly and they just grow so quickly. That is because they have so much of leaf on them. The leaf on them is what makes it thicker faster. Clear? So this branch, again these two, I've allowed them to grow long and I've chopped them back and now I'll wire this like that. Clear? Now this, I'll wire like that. Clear? Again, again, I'll get two shoots. Again, I'll get two shoots. Okay? Now this, again, allow them to grow wide. Bring it down. Cut it down. And this, I'll bring it like that. Clear? This I'll bring it like that. And if I'm interested in this height of bonsai, I'll stop there. If I'm interested with this height, I'll stop there. 
If I if I still want to go further, I'll just continue the same experiment further. Clear? So what happens is now I have stopped here and I'm happy with what it is. So now what happens is in bonsai, while you are going up and up and up and up, it's going to take you at least a year by the time you reach over there. So what happens is meantime, meantime, this will start, this new branch will start fusing into this. This will start fusing into this. So what happens is you will get a bond, you will have a trunk that is like that. You will have a trunk that is like that. So you have created your structure. You have created your structure. So now what happens, these are just growing white. These are just growing white, like that. Okay? And you are not these pauses. If you want to further thicken the trunk, if you want to further thicken the trunk, can you see this? Just allow to grow wild. This whole trunk will become thick. You understand? Later on you can chop it down. Later on you can chop it down. But if you want to thicken it faster and faster and faster, you just allow this, the leader, this is called the leader. You should just allow the leader to grow, if it is for the trunk. If it is for the branch, you just allow the branch to grow wild. Clear? If it is that, you just allow it to grow wild. Clear? Yeah? So now what happens? I have stopped over there. I was satisfied with this height of my tree. Now what I will do, I will chop it out like a triangle. Because I have allowed it to grow wild, now I am going to chop it like a triangle. That means I am going to cut out the branches like that. So I am not going to have this anymore. Yeah? Why have I chopped out of like that way? Can anybody tell me? Why have I, why have I chopped it off like that? Can anybody tell me? Triangular shape. The triangular shape you can always make it, you don't have to chop it so deep. But the reason why I chopped it so deep is now I have defined my primary branches. Now I have to start concentrating on my secondary branches. What is primary branches? Primary branches are branches which start from the trunk. So this is the structure of your tree. Now you have to start, that means it's just like this, the tree. Now you have to start spreading the tree. You have to bring branches. You have to bring tiny branches. So what happens now, this cut will make you bring in the filling effect. You start getting the secondary branch. So you have to work on the secondary branch. After the secondary branches, you work on the tertiary branches. What are the tertiary branches? Branches which start from the secondary branches. From the tertiary branches, you have your tiny twigs. And that's when your bonsai is ready. So, if you see a very basic cut, a very basic cut, which I just put at 45 degrees, which was 90 degrees and I put at 45 degrees, and I could bring a tree which had so much of movement. So I'll just... I'll just draw the structure of the tree so that you will be able to see. Bonsai is actually very easy. People make it look difficult. <laughs> so if you look at it, see, it looks like a pleasant bonsai, right? Now, can anybody tell me what is it that is making it look so beautiful over here? Very simple thing. The shape. Yeah, the shape. Next. Tapering, nice tapering. Tapering, yes. The movement. The movement, yes. Anything else? The width of the trunk. Crown, crown. The width. The, the canopy? The, the canopy? Okay. The cluster of leaves. Yeah, the branching, the pads. 
Okay. I tell you what is the thing.